Hey guys, um, I'm working on installing a remote oil pressure sender on the S2000 and I'm going to show you guys my setup and the easiest setup that I found. So a lot of people make the mistake of taking the 1 8 MPT um, that comes with the actual gauge and putting it onto the car. But the actual threads on the car is a 1 8 uh, BSP or BSPT thread. Um, and so you don't want to get the two systems mixed up because the national thread we use in US and Canada and the BSP thread is a British thread that they use everywhere else around the world. And so if you thread an MPT into a BSP thread hole, your block will crack. And so what we're going to do, what I did so far is I measured the threads to double check that this was the right adapter that I had. And I'll show you guys my setup. So I took the caliper, put it on a quarter inch, and then I counted the threads and it was seven threads. For that quarter inch so if you multiply by four there's 28 threads per inch and that's um, the adapter that you want so the setup that i have is um, it's a 1 8 male bsp um, to uh, 1 8 mpt adapter and then i also got another fitting right here and this is a 3 an male to a 1 8 mpt male and i threaded that in and that connects to a an line a three a dash three an line and that connects uh, with a 90 degree. I don't know, um, and plumbing uh, hooked me up with that. I don't know the size of this. It's probably another, it's probably an eighth MPT to um, a 3 and 90 degree fitting. And that hooks to the pressure uh, monitor right here, or the gauge, not the gauge, but whatever, the container that uh, outputs the electrical signal to the actual gauge. And so I also have an Adele clamp that hooks onto here, and I'll show you guys that the setup. Uh, it, goes to the heat shield right now. So this is a seven inch 3A-3AN line. It might be a little too long for my needs because I was originally looking at the Moto IQ setup and they had a, um, a really trick uh, adapter that I couldn't find anywhere. So I had to make come up with this um, two deal right here. And this is about an inch longer than I needed. So this whole should have been a six inch or a five inch probably, five and a half inch. But I'm gonna try to mount this somewhere where there's not a lot of uh, stress on this end right here because you don't want to have it too much um, weight on the end of the block right there because normally just a fitting goes there that monitors when your oil drops too low or your oil pressure drops too low but I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete that since it's not gonna throw any codes and uh, I'm gonna just zip tie it somewhere but yeah this is my remote uh, setup if you guys are interested and I'll show you guys why I didn't do go with um, the sandwich plate it's because I'm running an oil cooler and AccuSump and it's really difficult to get, um, you know, and get more places to mount more sensors. And I'll show you guys, I have an oil temp sensor that I figured out a cool way to mount as well. Um, that mounts uh, after the check valve with my AccuSump and oil cooler. And so I had to order a fitting that's not going to come here until next week. But this is the setup for now. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll try to help you guys. All right, out. so also for the wiring, I'm gonna show you guys what you're gonna need. So I'm actually doing the pressure and the temperature gauge from Autometer, and this is their digital gauge. So basically how it works from the diagram is there are, you're gonna have a connection on the wiring harness from the actual sensor to the gauge, but then you're also gonna have three free wires that are gonna be on each of these um, gauges as well. So I'm just going to pair those together and hopefully it works out. I didn't see anything about putting, I don't know why you would put it separate. It makes no sense. So I'm just going to crimp it all together. So the black is going to go to your ground. So I have a ring terminal. It's a 10 to 12. All right, guys, just forget what I'm saying here. You're going to need a 14 to 16 ring terminal. These I unfortunately didn't use. And so make sure you get a 14 to 16, uh, wire gauge ring terminal. For the female connection, you're gonna want a quarter inch and same thing for your ring terminal, get a quarter inch. That's the way I'm doing it. You guys can do whatever you want. Um, you also have the red for your 12 volt connection. So this is your, you're gonna go into your ignition, I believe, or I have to double check. But there's, there's, there's two different ones. One of these is gonna be your ignition and one is gonna be your uh, dash. I have to double check, I'll get back to you guys on that. I thought it was, I thought one was ignition and one was a constant 12 volt. I have to, I believe the 12 volt uh, dash is for when you turn on the lights, it's going to make the gauge brighter. Uh, don't, I'll, I'll correct myself later in the video if I figure out uh, if there's anything different. 
but they also say fuse seat caution below right here and it says they recommend um, a fuse be connected to the 12 volt ignition switch so that's why I believe this one is ignition and this one's the 12 volt constant I don't know I'm gonna double check um, so they, re they recommend a 1 amp 3AG fax acting type cartridge fuse which is they, there's a typo on this <laughs> instruction right here it says little fuse it's actually the tail fuse right here not that that matters but um, 312 double Oh, one or equivalent so I, I mean I have no idea because I'm not an uh, expert in fuses or wiring or anything so I went to O'Reilly's I got a pack of fuses right here these are one amp like they recommend and then there doesn't say anything about 3 AG but on the website it says one amp five pack carded five pack of 3 AG size glass body so I believe 3 AG is the glass the size of the glass body and I needed a fuse holder for that. So I found a glass inline fuse holder that they sell at O'Reilly's. And I'll show you guys how that works. At first I was kind of confused. So I actually put the fuse in here already and it fits perfectly. I was wondering how the different fuse bodies fit, but there's a spring inside that uh, will adjust to the length of different fuses. Um, and then you basically, these lock in between. And then to get it in line, you actually, I believe you split this, you cut this cable and strip it back. And so that was, that was kind of confusing at first. I was like, I saw another package that had um, the ends already cut off and stripped. And this one was kind of like a loop. So I was kind of confused on how to get the signal through. Because I believe how it works is when the uh, voltage or the current is too high, the fuse will break before it you know, gets to the fries of the electronics. I don't know. I'm not an expert. Someone correct me in the comments below. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got that. I got some ring terminals. Um, the quick female disconnects, that's how I'm going to connect to the power in the fuse box. I'm going to put all the wires into here and crimp it. And that's about it for the wiring. I'll show you guys when I get out there to the car. I need to figure out the white and the red real quick because I'm kind of confused on... Um, I believe that's ignition and that's constant 12 volt. I'll double check with you guys and let you know. Okay, so if you look at the bottom one that says ignition, this is where all of your red cables are gonna go. So uh, when you turn on your car to turn it to the on position, I believe, I forgot it was on or accessory, but when you turn it on, your gauges are gonna turn on. You're not gonna use the middle one and then the top one are your gauge lights for your illumination. These are all your white wires are gonna crimp to that female disconnect that's a quarter inch. And when you turn it on, or when you turn your headlights on, the like, numbers actually dim and the actual uh wording for the oil pressure and oil temperature actually turn on and they turn white and so that's all the wiring you're going to do and then you're going to find a ground in the car as well and put all your black wires crimped into a connector uh, a ring terminal and then you're going to put it on that ground and that's it for the wiring okay and also to add for the wiring that you want to take your fuse um, split it into two and then add a female uh, crimp onto the end of it and then add a male as well and so that the fuse will actually plug straight into that fuse box and the three red wires will plug into the end of the fuse I'll show you guys my setup and that's the easiest way I found to put the fuse in and Autometer recommends it so why not for my temperature sensor I kind of broke it already um, you know, this was actually too long, and the fitting I got from Earl's and Hawthorne was, um, you know, too short. And at first, I started sanding the end of the fitting, um, and you know, knowing that there's the thermocouple is a little bit deeper than the actual end of the brass. Um, and I kind of went too deep, and now you can see the thermal paste in there. Um, so that's not good. I ordered a new one, it sent me back $30. It was kind of stupid, but. I didn't have anywhere to tap to, so I looked online and the Race Flux actually makes um, a Dash 10 um, male to female with an eighth MPT for your my thermocouple. And so this is cool because it's raised. So you can see unlike this one, which is kind of flush with the body, it doesn't give much room for the sensor because this is pretty long. And so it says that on the details that it'll accept up to an one inch in length um, temperature probe and so I measured this uh, before I cut it and I know that's definitely gonna fit with the raised fitting so that's where I'm gonna mount my temperature so that is after the oil cooler uh, it's in line after the check valve 
Um, that's where I'm measuring my oil temperature at since I don't want to tap into the oil pan. And I already put the oil pan back on because I did a baffle about a few weeks ago. So I'm not taking the oil pan back off because I got it sealed really well. And that's how I'm doing the oil temperature. So the two different gauges I have are oil temperature and oil pressure. Okay, so this is in the car where I have my check valve at and I'm gonna include that fitting either or after the check valve so that this is where the oil returns from the oil cooler after it's passed through and it's going to the AccuSump and back to the engine. And so I'm gonna put that probe right there. Another thing to remind yourself is when you're doing this remote setup, make sure this thread is a BS pt not a bspp because in bsp threads there's actually two of them there's a tapered one which is the bspt and then there's a parallel thread which is the bspp so make sure this is a bs because some websites will annotate it as bsp but it doesn't tell you if it's a bspp or a bspt so make sure that this adapter right here um, is a 1 8 inch bspt so good news i was checking the oil sensor uh sender and I saw a bunch of Honda Bond around the, you know, the area and I thought it was aftermarket. I thought somebody took it apart already and was wondering why it was such a mess. And turns out when I was reading on the forums that that's how it comes from factory. So, you know, I was pretty relieved there because it looked like somebody, I was scared somebody would uh, strip the thread and then put a Healy coil in it and then goot it up with Honda Bond to keep it from leaking. So I was scared the threads weren't going to hold. But it turns out that, you know, that's how it comes from factory. And good news, the, I, I believe the threads hold and there's no oil leaking from when I put on my fitting. So good news, because I was kind of scared. I had a bad experience with uh, some previous thread. And if anybody can help me figure out where the oil is leaking from, I'd greatly appreciate it because I've replaced every single seal on the VTEC solenoid. And from a video I watched in LHT Performance, they said even if you replace all the seals, um, apparently it can leak through the porosity of the aluminum since it's cast. So if anybody has any idea, because I still can't, I cleaned up that area so many times and I cannot figure out, it's been a pain in the butt, but I believe I might have to just replace the whole VTEC solenoid um, with a whole brand new unit. And that's fairly expensive, I believe it's like two, $300. And so I didn't tighten it, I did hand tight at first, and then I went in with a few turns on the ratchet. And it's pretty hard to get a ratchet in there. And this is a 916 wrench with a 3 8 ratchet. And so it feels pretty tight. Um, if it leaks, I'll go a little tighter. But I didn't want to go too tight as, uh, you know, in case I damage the threads or something. It is aluminum, so it's very soft. And so now I'm going to get the actual sender on there. Not the sender, but the, I don't know what you call this. The canister looks like a canister it probably has a drum inside that somehow magically measures the pressure i'm gonna get this on the and line on the actual end of that fitting and i'm gonna try to put it on so there's not a lot of uh compression on this wire it is a little too long but i don't want to go back to an parts or an plumbing and get another one remade even though that's the right way to do it but let me see if i can get this mounted where it doesn't bend the line and it's pretty straight here's how i have it there's a little bend in the wire, but when it's tightened, it doesn't feel like it has too much tension on it. So hopefully it works out. It needs to be like an inch shorter. Um, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Um, so before I tighten everything, I'm gonna get the wires routed now. So the electronics and uh, the electrical. And I'm gonna go through the either the passenger side firewall or the driver's side where I already uh, routed some stuff for my AccuSump. There's a little grommet somewhere here that came through, poked a hole through. I forgot what they're called. Little pins that you use to pop out clips and stuff. Let me show you <laughs> a pick. That's what it is. Um, yeah, let me show you guys what the gauges look like in the car. And hopefully the wire is long enough because I don't have any extra wire. Otherwise, I'll be able to get some more wire. But, and I gotta drill a hole in the firewall for the temperature sensor as well the clip's pretty big if I can find it you know there's a bunch of wiring actually I don't know if I clipped it yet so over oh, right here so I can shove this through um, for the thermocouple I can shove this through the grommet or drill a hole in the firewall and I'm probably gonna shove it through a grommet because I don't want to drill in inch hole that's what it said to drill and they give you a rubber grommet so I'm not gonna do that 
Um, here's what the gauges look like. Minus the messy wiring. It looks worse than it actually is. Um, let me check if it's going to reach. How far it's going to go. So that stays in the car. This temperature is going to go to the thermal couple, which is right here where the check valve is. And one of these purple wires is probably going to go to there. So the best route to go is through the same existing hole that I made in the, for the accu sump. I'm just going to tape it to one of the wires and pull one of the wires back and forth. And hopefully it goes through. Looks like the wires are going to be long enough. And it's just been a pain in the ass, to be honest, guys. In your car, making building like a track car is a real pain in the ass. So much to do, so much to learn. Um, here are my gauges. You can see the plastic's a little different. This one's a little shinier. They got a slightly different texture, but this is the best we can get. Uh, and it fits the fitment is pretty good. And so how Autometer tells you to do it is they want you to put it over the existing cover. And they want you to move it like this. And then in each one of the four corners, drill a hole and they give you a plastic grommet to tie it in place. But you can see that without any pressure, you know, it naturally wants to sit, I'm sorry. It naturally wants to sit kind of off. So I'm, I need to figure this out because you don't want to force it here and then put a grommet in because it's always going to be wanting to move back to this spot. And so that's not very good. I don't know, you know, what am I going to do? Maybe I'll double tape it instead of drilling it because I don't want to drill on the plastics. But it looks pretty good. It's in the, your A-pillar. It's not, it doesn't take up too much of your uh, viewing space. Oil pressure, oil temp. Um, the gauges are pretty cheap to set up as long as with the panel. And my AccuSump switch is down here. I need to label this. And with the oil pressure, hopefully I get this done by today, I'll be able to see my idle, engine idle pressure, my engine <laughs> idle oil pressure. And so that's good because the valve I have on my AccuSump is actually, I believe like a 35 PSI valve. So if I'm idling and the engine oil pressure is below 35 PSI, it's gonna open that valve and dump two quarts of oil into my system, which I don't want. And so I only want to turn this on at the track. And um, you know, at the track, hopefully I'll never be idling somewhere on the track. But if I am, I can keep track of my oil pressure. And if it drops below 35, I'll turn the AccuSump off. It'll reprime itself. And I also got this cool light and I built a custom bracket for it. Um, that tells me when the AccuSump is on, uh, when I have the switch on or off. That's pretty cool. I got some inspiration from Modify. Shout out to those guys. And yeah, the car's coming along. Lots of stuff to do. I'm excited to get the, at least the pressure wired up the temperature i have to wait for a new dongle to come out but i'm going to finish wiring that as well since we're doing both and i'll show you guys the process all right guys so let me show you guys what the issue i'm having now is after i got everything wired up so you can see i turn everything to the on position i have an oil temp but my oil pressure is not connecting for some reason so i gotta figure out that the good news is kind of good news when you turn on your lights you can see that the oil temp actually yeah, lights I don't know where it cut off but when you turn on your lights at night your oil temp lights up but the oil pressure doesn't light up so i have a bad connection somewhere um i have to check one of my crimps to see if it's connecting you know i think it is because there's power but for some reason um it's not getting a good reading so i'm gonna figure that out and i'll let you guys know what the issue was but half a meter or half a meter set up it's pretty cool and I gotta get the other half set up is I got the gauge working you can see the lights turn on now when I turn on my uh, headlights so good news is I can figure out what my oil pressure is the bad news is my AccuSump stopped working so I know I gotta figure out why the gauge doesn't work with the AccuSump um, so yeah it used to work and now it doesn't work at all so now I gotta troubleshoot it and figure out why it's not working um, yeah that's gonna be fun so but I'll show you guys let me turn off my car and I'll tell you guys what happened with the uh, why the oil pressure gauge wasn't working was the pressure sender needs to be grounded so because I'm doing a remote setup normally they said it's grounded through the threads but 
if you have a high vibration engine, which I have a uh, solid or has port motor mounts, um, the car vibrates a lot. So I'm remote mounting the sender. And since when you do that, you have to ground it, uh, the body of the sender. And so I had an Adele clamp with an insulating uh, rubber piece that wasn't getting a good ground. So that's why the sensor wasn't connecting. And so what I did was I took off the rubber. Um, I remade new holes and it barely fits. You can see it's kind of loose which is it's not really loose but i put some safety wire if i wanted to do like a janky way but i'm gonna order a new clamp that's metal um so i can do uh you know it can i don't have to worry about it coming out of there and breaking off the block because if it does that the block might crack but that was the issue um i'm gonna show you guys how everything wires again after i figure out my accusump setup and why it's not working which is kind of strange because i haven't touched it at all and you know the wiring's Still the same here so uh, i don't know maybe it's the ground i don't understand why it's not working anymore so i'm gonna figure that out and i'll show you guys all right guys so here's my solution i came up with so i made a uh, kind of like a male connector quick connect on this hose clamp hopefully it works i'm gonna ground this to the pressure sender right here i'm using the dell clamp that i was initially using so i'm gonna put this on the other side and that's gonna solve my two problems that I have of that um, pressure center being slightly loose in that Dell clamp. Um, so this end is not gonna, it's gonna act as a ground, but it's also not gonna let that center slip out of the uh, clamp. I'm not 100% happy with it, so I'm gonna redo it. Um, I need to get a new clamp. The clamp is way too loose. Let me show you guys. You can see how loose it is. I don't like it at all, but it's not gonna come out of that clamp, but it keeps that line moving and then this engine vibrates a lot. So you can see how I grounded the body. And I just came to this point right here. And it looks like it works. So if you guys are looking for a similar idea, you can use a hose clamp, dremel it out so you can put a male quick disconnect on it and it will work. And my AccuSump is working. Um, it's, it's just that when I first tested it um, with no oil in the actual AccuSump, when I turned on the switch, this light would turn blue. And that's because the, send, or the pressure sender over there detected that the oil pressure was zero and so it always was opening the valve and then when the valve is open this light will turn blue and so that's how you this light is meant for when the AccuSump is working I believe so I can show you guys that right now because when I turn on my oil pressure is actually zero so I'm going to use the AccuSump to prime the engine and you're going to see that the oil pressure is going to jump up let me see if I can get everything in view great so if I you can see it's at zero right now so if I turn on the switch you're gonna see the oil pressure start to climb. The AccuSump's gonna turn on and then that's when I can start the car. And so, let me show you guys. And so that's gonna close because the oil pressure is above 35. It's gonna refill itself using the engine oil pressure earlier and that's what the AccuSump was discharging the oil in the sump and so when this when the actual engine oil pressure drops below 35 because I have the 35 to 40 psi valve it's gonna open the AccuSump so I know that this engine oil uh, idles below 34 psi so I'm gonna actually turn the AccuSump off now and even though it's off it's gonna continue to still prime the AccuSump um, full of oil back to normal and I can, let me see if I can go show you guys how much oil it discharged so that's good for priming your engine so you don't have to worry about uh, any uh, premature damage on startup. Hey guys, so today we're gonna be buttoning up the autometer gauge. I'm gonna clip it or drill holes to clip it that uh, with the clips, the push clips that they gave you in the packaging. They tell you to drill on each corner. I think I'm only gonna do the top two since the bottom two is being held in uh, pretty decently. And I'll show you guys what that so looks like. You can like. see the gauge is in. The bottom is actually held in by uh, force, by the actual design of the, the A-pillar. And then the top is kind of off as you can see so okay so right here i'm showing you guys how it doesn't line up too well so what i did was i took off the a pillar tucked the wires behind it and then put it back on and it started fitting a little bit better you can run it without the a pillar but then these vents are pretty ugly drill i think i'm going to start with one right here in the top left corner and then i'm going to do one in the back right here and we'll see how that goes it calls for a 3 a bit so let me drill it, put the pop, uh, one clip in and see how it lines up because there's actually a little bit of force and I'm trying to figure out how that holds, if it holds really well or not. 
So let me do one in this corner first, see how it holds. Because it kind of wants to keep going back, which sucks. Um, so I'll figure that out. I'll let you guys know. Okay, guys. Uh, it turned out better than I expected. Let me turn up the brightness. I'm recording my iPhone, so it's pretty shitty. Um, let me adjust the exposure. But I did two of them, one in each corner. You can see these uh, pins are pretty small. Um, I did one and it held up pretty well. But just to be safe, rather than sorry and having these gauges come out or something happening over time, I did two, so I don't have to worry about that. It lines up really well. Put the tr rubber trim back over it and it looks really good. Um, one tip is make sure you take off the A-pillar and you can tuck the wiring behind the A-pillar instead of tucking it between the two pieces of plastic. You want to tuck it behind the A-pillar and that's a, it helped me a lot. You can see the wiring is loose so it's not being uh, sandwiched between the two pieces of plastic. I'm going to route this in here now and then put the stock plastic back in. And then since I didn't cut any of these lines right here, um, just, you know, better be safe than sorry. I'm going to zip tie it really nice in like a bundle and then uh, zip tie it to some other wires. Yeah, I could have cut that to make it shorter and perfect, but um, I'd rather have it longer just in case something happens. I don't know. Better be safe than sorry. But yeah, it looks good. Looks pretty stock. Right, everything's tucked up pretty nicely besides the bundle of wire here. It's kind of just loose. Uh, it doesn't really have a place to go. I could probably put some, some trim here or something that will get it to stay inside. Uh, I'll figure that out later. So it's like little stuff like that. There's really no instructions for. Everything tucks away nicely behind this trim piece right here. Is it tight everything? And you can see it's going through the boot right there where all my wires are going through the firewall. So you don't have to drill any holes. I just shoved everything through the boot, even the temperature sender or sensor. And you can see here are the gauges. They kind of stick out a little bit. So if you can see, they're a little white. I don't know if it's the threads backing out on the A-pillar. It might be. It doesn't bother me. And I don't want to cut the threads on the gauges. <laughs> so, yeah, everything buttons up really nice. I'm pretty impressed for aftermarket gauges. I was looking at different brands, but Autometer had the complete package, so... And they're a U.S. company, too. And I said, why not? And everything was fairly inexpensive. I think I was under, like, 350 for both gauges and the uh, A-pillar. So for you guys wondering, uh, to quickly recap, um, you need to get some ring terminals. Don't be like me and get the ones that are too big. The ring terminal size is gonna be a quarter inch. And then get like 14 to 16 gauge uh, ring terminals. They should fit just fine. You're gonna ground uh, your black wires. Yeah, make sure you get a fuse as well. If you look earlier in the video, everything's tucked behind there and everything's just plug and play and make sure you get your female quick disconnect that's a quarter inch as well it's going to go through the firewall right in that port that area right there you just poke a hole in it use like a pick or something and i have a few wires going through there everything's going to get cleaned up you can see i have a few wires running through there from my accusump setup this is all going to get buttoned up in this wire loom stuff with electrical tape so it's going to look oem my temperature sensor is not set up yet because i broke it trying to shorten it <laughs> we saw early in the video and that's going to go right here after the check valve coming from the oil cooler it's probably going to go right here it's just an attachment so this hose is going to get a little longer but it, i think it should be fine uh, i'll figure it out if not i might cut the hose back to account for that extra fitting that's going to go there i'm waiting i got some hose separators but they're too big for these hoses for some reason so i gotta go back to the drawing board and figure that out because you don't want the hot and the cold hoses to touch otherwise it renders it pointless so i'm going to figure that out so i can get this nicely cleaned up in this area that's kind of tight and i'll make another video showing you guys my accusump setup and how it works but yeah the wiring's done this ground is going to get fixed because i don't like how it is this setup down here with the oil pressure sender is to be determined because I do not like it. I like the clamp that I made <laughs> that gets the ground for that uh, pressure center, but I don't really like the bend in this wire, or this A in line, because um, I don't know how much pressure it's putting on that fitting at the end right there. Um, let me know if you guys have done this similar setup before or not, but I think that's gonna get changed because I don't like that bend and I don't want all that pressure on that, you know, the end right there. I was thinking about putting it right here 
building a bracket and then putting it right here on the firewall. That way I don't have to worry about anything and I can just run a long line all the way to that fitting. Um, but yeah, and then the wires going through the, behind the block as well, or the engine the valve cover. So that stuff's gonna get tidied up with wire loom and maybe get repositioned. But that's how you guys install uh, oil pressure and oil temperature gauge in your S2000. Er, this is a 2006 AP2, by the way. If you guys have any questions, oops, please leave a comment down below. I'll try to help you guys out. I haven't seen too many videos on this. Um, but definitely recommended, especially if you have an AccuSump, that way you can monitor the pressure um, of your oil. And you, I can, it's pretty cool that I have this light too, because when you, in the morning, when I start the car up, like you saw earlier in the video, the light blinks to tell you that the AccuSump's are uh, working. And then you can see the oil pressure jump to like 30 PSI and it pre lubes the engine before you start it. So there's less wear and tear on the motor, which is gonna be good because this motor has a lot of miles on it, about 150,000. And the setup looks really good, so I'm pretty happy. Stay tuned for the next video, guys. I'm gonna, so we have a lot of work to do. See, I'm waiting for my cage in the back. I took out all the, I stripped out all the sound deadening. We're gonna put the EVS roll bar in there. And I painted it semi-gloss black, and it turned out pretty decent. Um, considering I'm not a professional spray painter, <laughs> I masked everything pretty well, primed everything. Um, you can see back here, it's not painted because the OEM carpet's going back in. Um, so yeah, it's going to be like a street track car. It's not going to be a total track car, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video. If you like this video, please subscribe for more content and thanks for the support. We'll see you guys later.